friends. Not long ago, I attempted to do a walk on mass. <laughs> I went down West Confederate Avenue. My symptoms were very visible, which is why I chose not to post most of the video. Um, slurring my speech. Um, strange facial expressions that I didn't even know were on my video. But in any event, guys, um, I really didn't want to post that video. Some big eagles and hawks up there. So I hope you enjoy this walk on mass. For my three friends who donated, thank you from all of us with MS. There may never be a cure, but if there is, thank you for helping achieve that cure. And so my friends, Come along with me. I'm going to take you into Gettysburg on my commute into town. That's right, into town. So we're going into town. We're going to have some fun and we're going to talk to some cool people. And I'm going to show you guys some stuff that you've never seen before. There's a few of you, maybe a dozen of you, maybe two dozen of you that have seen this stuff before. But the majority of my friends live far and wide. The majority of my friends I've known my whole life live on two continents all over. And you guys have never been here. And you asked me, Daryl, why would you move to a place like Gettysburg? Because man, you are walking through the 19th century in this preserved ground. And this is some of the most horticulturally and botanically preserved ground in the country. These are young trees. These trees weren't here. There might have been one or two. But man, when you're walking through here, you're walking through American history and it's awesome and it's beautiful. It's preserved. So, and nobody has done a Walk MS Gettysburg on the Gettysburg battlefield for multiple sclerosis until, you, until yours truly. All right, and good morning from Gettysburg. Who wants to go for a walk? Let's go for a walk. And this is where I live, at Gettysburg West. This property used to be the Abraham Spangler farm during the Civil War, during the Battle of Gettysburg. And this is the infamous Lincoln Highway. And this highway stretches almost all the way across the United States. And it actually goes right to my hometown. And I drove Route 30 all the way here to Gettysburg. So let's uh, carry on. Here across the street, guys, is where I usually walk. And this is the old Gettysburg Country Club across the street from where I live. And Sydney, the restaurant there, is an excellent restaurant. And that's also the day spa. But behind there is where I usually walk. And that's the Gettysburg Country Club. Now this property across Lincoln Highway, back during the Battle of Gettysburg, this was the Emanuel Harmon Farm across the street from my house. My apartment, I should say. And my second, third cousins from my mother's side of the family, the Harmons, lived here during the Battle of Gettysburg. And this is where I take a walk most of the time in my videos. But let's carry on. So. When you cross Willoughby Run, you will be officially on the battlefield, on the official battlefield. Of course, battles and fights and deaths were happening everywhere I walk. And so this is the run in my front yard. And like I said, <coughs> once we cross the run, we're in the battlefield and we are on in Gettysburg National Military Park. And so in the winter time, in the past, I've snowshoed through that hell. And if you can imagine in that field, on the morning of July 1st, 1863, on both sides of this road, were thousands and thousands and thousands of soldiers marching into Gettysburg. Everywhere we are, there was gunfire, cannon fire, everything. So let's carry on. I got some cool stuff to share with you guys today. 
for me. Welcome to my Gettysburg. I've been out for a walk on the average once a month since March. This is what we call day one of the battle. July 1st, 1863, this is where the first day's battle, the Battle of Gettysburg occurred here. And this is my neighborhood. This is where I live. Can't complain. Now, most of my friends and most people have never been to Gettysburg. So if you'd like a preview, keep watching. We're gonna go up to McPherson's barn, Robert E. Lee's headquarters, cut through the seminary. We'll see what else that we can find. It's freezing out here today. It's like 50, it's awesome. It feels like it's 30. It's perfect. If you have multiple sclerosis, man, today's a good day. It's too bright. I don't have any sunglasses, it sucks. My sunglasses broke, but I'm gonna enjoy this walk. It's gonna kick my ass for a few days. And we're at the ranger station. Abraham Lincoln and Napoleon, they planned a little battle of Little Bighorn right here in this restroom. All right, we are here and I live there. And so we're gonna go cut around, go down through town, cut back up through the woods. Like I said, check it out. The battlefield's really busy today. So check it out guys. I hope you can see that, but this is the opening gun of the Battle of Gettysburg that fired the first shot from this spot under the command of General Buford who was portrayed by Sam Elliott in the film. General Reynolds was killed in the morning of the first day's battle right over in Herbst Woods. And so this is where General Buford said, the high ground. Wouldn't that make a good coffee shop in Gettysburg? Are you a reenactor, a living historian? And you have an opportunity to leave that teenage kid with that one memory from Gettysburg and teach him something or show him something that people all around him didn't even know or see, leave that young person with a really positive memory of their video, of their visit to Gettysburg. I was just talking to that father and his son and I was telling them about General Buford, showed them where the first cannon was that fired the first shot. They enjoyed that very much. And they were from Michigan with all my Viking cousins. My friends, is the infamous and legendary young Ben Crippen. And Ben Crippen kept picking that flag up and picking that flag up and picking that flag up right over here at the railroad cut. So that railroad cut, there's a railroad right down in there that that bridge goes over. And that railroad cut goes right down to Willoughby Run where I live. So the railroad cut, the Confederates came up the railroad cut and a great big battle ensued in this area. Ben Crippen was engaged in the fights here and he kept that flag held high. Teenage boy. That's some heroism, that's some bravery. A lot of folks out on the field today. One rule that if you guys visit Gettysburg, you should know. And for my friends back in Illinois, here's Illinois 8th, Illinois 12th, that fired the first rifle shots of this battle were from Illinois, right from our neck of the woods. Matt, James, Roy, you guys. Illinois, man, was right here. Guys from our neck of the woods, right from Illinois. Cavalry. That monument, Illinois Monument, Abner Doubleday. Awesome. The funny thing is, is that these monuments, a lot of them, the monuments are pointed the wrong way. Okay, for example, this is day one. Everyone knows that by day three, the Confederates had pushed the Yankees all the way up into the hills east of town. So my question is, 
why aren't those Yankee monuments pointed the other way? Because they were retreating. And that is your hilarious Civil War moment of the day. So there's probably a scout troop out there. The one rule I was talking about is in Gettysburg, if you ever visit Gettysburg, you can go anywhere on the Gettysburg battlefield. You can traverse across the fields anywhere you want on the battlefield, okay? Unless there are growing crops on a field, then you should not cross the growing crops on the field. So stay out of big agricultural fields. Aside from that, you can go anywhere in Gettysburg. Um, there's old historical homes out on the battlefield. You can go up and check out the homes. Um, respect people's privacy because people do live in the homes and they're usually park employees, rangers, restorationists, that sort of thing. And we are headed up to the Widow Thompson's house there in the distance and that was Robert E. Lee's headquarters. But Robert E. Lee actually camped on the right side of the road and there was local women and teenagers who were holding up in the Widow Thompson's house during the battle. And so more about that in a bit. Let's cruise through the Widow Thompson's house. Awesome, thank you American Battlefield Trust. Awesome, I'll make it through. And my friends, welcome to Robert E. Lee's headquarters. It's an awesome day. See, check it out. Even Austin Powers loves Gettysburg. And so the Widow Thompson lived here during the Battle of Gettysburg. And many of the women, the civilians, that were caught up in the Battle of Gettysburg ended up staying here and were fed and cared for and protected by Robert E. Lee and the Confederate Army. And so my second, third cousins actually spent the duration of the battle here in this home. Let's carry on. The Meade School, obviously named after General Meade, the commanding Union officer of the battle here. It's a beautiful building. It's a hotel now. We are at probably my favorite restaurant in town. And this is the Gary Owen Irish Pub and they have excellent food and they have excellent brews. And it's a really cool place to eat inside there. And so if you're ever in Gettysburg, morning, go right ahead. Just making a video for friends about my favorite restaurant. You guys have a good day. So Gary Owen's awesome. They have some awesome food. But every time that I ask them for lamb stew or soda bread, they don't have them. And those are two Irish items that any Irish restaurant or pub should have. But, I have a date. See, there's even hearts on there. So I have a date with my top secret lady friend and we will probably go to Gary Owen Pub like we always do, sometime when she is available. And things are gonna get crazy and we're gonna get up on a table and make wild animal noises. So stay tuned for the video. <laughs> we're almost to the square and I've never showed you guys the square on video. And so we have some nice coffee shops that are fun and popular. It's a lot of fun. Good morning. What's up? How you doing, man? Good. How's your grub? Awesome. Awesome. Have an awesome day. You're speaking my language. Vape stores. The 1711 downtown. It's nice here, you guys. I'm glad I could show you this today. A lot of live tunes in town and yeah it's busy like this there's a lot of people a lot of tourists on the weekends at least this is kind of like a normal non-covid gettysburg day 
so it's as if there's no COVID-19 even going on. So I'm down into the populated downtown Gettysburg, so I masked up. I don't usually wear a mask because I probably see one or two people a month and that's it. But I'm masking up now because there'll be a bunch of people down here walking around. If I get COVID-19, there's a 93% chance that I am dead meat. So years ago when my daughter was little, there used to be a Civil War church right here and it was made out of wood. And the pastor there would have a Sunday Civil War service and people would show up wearing their Civil War living history impressions. It was really cool. I think about 10 years ago it burned down. That's a really cool store. They've got stuff in there from every war. You'll find stores like that all over Gettysburg. And coming up is the best part. There ain't nobody wear a mask down here. I'm going to avoid people with my mask off. Welcome to the square. <coughs> this is the best part. So coming up you guys, this year I want to make it down here for when they light up the Christmas tree. And so we'll light up a great big giant Christmas tree soon. And I want to get down here and film that. You guys will really like it. It's a lot of fun. We've had some really cool parades down here. Remembrance Day is coming up. I imagine that the um, I imagine that the um, parade's probably been canceled. It's one of the biggest national events of the year is the Remembrance Day parade here for the Civil War. Um, I believe November 18th to the 21st is usually the dates. But I imagine that the parade's been canceled this year because of COVID-19. Welcome to the square, let's take a walk around. And there's the infamous historical Gettysburg Hotel. And it has a beautiful ballroom in it and I hope I can show that to you guys sometime. A lot of nice little coffee shops right here on the square. Let's take a look around a little bit. So this place has changed up. Keep in mind, I've probably been downtown once this entire year. I was probably downtown once last year. I spend most of my time out in the battlefield in the woods so I don't get downtown very much. I also don't drive and I don't have transportation, but boy, the square sure is nice, isn't it? So I used to, when I was healthy, I used to walk down and I used to chill out and I used to get donuts and coffee. There used to be a little bakery and coffee shop in there and I used to walk down here with my iPad and I used to chill out in the mornings because I didn't work very far. My biggest client was the um, Brick House Inn, which is the 13th best bed and breakfast in the United States and I took care of that property. I was the master gardener there for a couple of years before I got sick with multiple sclerosis. And so this is where I finished up my career. And that is the Blue and Gray restaurant and they have excellent hamburgers there. And that building is where the photographer gardener took, that was his photo studio when he was here in Gettysburg, taking what would turn out to be Probably the first actual photos of a battlefield or war or carnage that had ever been seen by the American public. And so he, I'm sure he worked on his photos in this building, but that was his studio. And I see two reenactors out today. For all you Christians, my Christian friends out there, Christmas is coming and you guys, this place is going to, this is going to look awesome. So if I'm healthy enough to get out, tune in and see what I have to share with you here in Gettysburg for a very Civil War, Norman Rockwell-esque holiday season. It'd be very nice. I don't know how much further I'm gonna get. 
That is the old Majestic Theater, and it is beautiful in there. It looks like a movie theater from the 1930s. And one of the really cool things about the Majestic is, is that during the summertime, they have one month where classic movies are played on the big screen. So you can see Jaws, you can see E.T., you can see Gettysburg um, on the big screen, on the great big silver screen, and a really historical old red velvet and dark wood theater in there. They have a few screens in there, but it's really awesome um, to watch all those old classic films in there. And they are 95 years old this year. That's awesome. And that's the old Gettysburg train station, isn't that? It's just an awesome building. I'll try to get over there and take a look inside. Isn't that just beautiful? It used to be yellow. The railroad depot was built in 1858 in the fashionable Italianate villa style. This railroad depot and its attendant telegraph line afforded Gettysburg with modern day transportation and communication. The Battle of Gettysburg expanded its use for unanticipated purposes. So it looks like we have another video spot to go take a tour in the old Gettysburg train station sometime, huh? That looks sounds awesome. And did you know Ike lived here? So I still have several videos I'm working on, guys. Thanks for your patience. Forney Farm Day 1 Oak Ridge Peace Monument. Peach Orchard and Trossel Farm. I have a lot on my plate. I'm doing my best. I have no medicine today, so as the day goes on, I'm probably going to deteriorate a little bit. And I'll be okay tomorrow. And to all my friends, again, who donated to my birthday fundraiser, thank you for the medications this month. Guys, it's Kadori Toys, and this is probably the coolest toy store that you will ever see. And you see those nesting dolls? My daughter collects those nesting dolls. But this is the coolest toy store in town. You'll love it. Good morning. So let's look at some cool stuff. So you see this building? This is where Abraham Lincoln wrote the Gettysburg Address. So this is the Wills House. This is where Lincoln wrote the Gettysburg Address. And another tour that I want to do for you guys, I want to take you to the cemetery. And hopefully this year, coming up soon, uh, it may indeed be this weekend, that we'll be doing here in Gettysburg the reenactment of the Gettysburg Address. And so if I get a chance, I get a ride, I'm able to get down to that, I will film that for you guys. And that will be awesome. Thanks a lot. Guys. Yeah, you're welcome. Friendly people. So check it out, you guys. You see right up there, and that coffee can looking thing up on the um, chimney. There's a webcam up there. And so you can look at the square on webcam. And if I find the link, I'll post the link with the video. And you can look down here at the square in all kinds of different seasons. It's awesome. You check this out, guys. You will love this. This is Dirty Billy's hats. Okay, Dirty Billy has probably made the hats for most of the films that you have ever seen. Okay. He made Indiana Jones' hat for, hats for the Indiana Jones films. He made my Kepi for my Civil War impression. Two of them, actually. And he used to have these green drapes in here. And my daughter and I used to joke all the time that... We used to joke all the time that the green drapes were the green drapes from the film Gone with the Wind. And they very well may have been. But this is Dirty Billies. If you're going to get a hat and you're interested in reenacting, Definitely stop into Dirty Billy's. He made the hats for the Gettysburg film, uh, Gods and Generals, you name it. And so that's what that is. And this is our library. And it used to be my daily haunt until I couldn't get out of the house anymore. 
four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Do you remember reciting that in front of class in high school? You know, I'd sit out here and I'd just talk to people going by and I'd leave them laughing every time. But I'm not going to make it all the way down Baltimore Street. From this point, south, north, west, east. From this point south on Baltimore Street is really touristy. Ice cream shops t-shirt shops lots of ghost tours there's ghost tours happening right now um, civil war tours going on and um, next time I'm in town once I can start using the bus I will take you guys down Baltimore Street um, and show you guys the most populated touristy area of town it's very interesting but it's very touristy I'm not really interested in tourism here. I'm more interested in the history and the woods and the fields and the forest and the battlefield. Um, but I still wanted to show you guys. Most of you, most of my friends have never been here, will probably never ever be here, um, visit here. So I'm looking forward to sharing it with you guys. What's happening guys? What's going? Good. What are you guys gonna see today? Awesome. You guys have fun. Thank you. I get out for a walk into town, I'll wear my Civil War uniform. Comment below, do you want to see me in Yankee or Confederate? Or civilian farmer? Your choice. If you're ever in town and you want Thai food, I have heard far and wide that this Thai restaurant is excellent. I've never eaten in here, but every one of my friends who has said that it's outstanding. And it's here on Buford, which is Route 30, which goes to my house. Ernie's Texas lunch. And I'm heading home. And I'm not gonna take the bus because I wanted to take you guys on my full commute into town and back. And so I'm gonna head back through the battlefield and through the woods. And so we're up here on the other side of the Lutheran Seminary here in Gettysburg, and I'm on my way home. One of the things that I didn't state when I started the video is, is that if you're somebody who's never watched my videos or you're not acquainted with me, I have multiple sclerosis. So I may talk a little differently. It's not because I'm high or drunk. And in my little trip into town just now, there were a lot of people that I was engaging that were looking at me like there was something wrong with me. And the only thing wrong with me is MS. But we're gonna hike through the seminary. But before we do, check this out. This little back porch, this little veranda here. It's where President Eisenhower used to come and have cocktails at cocktail hour. So let's go check out this beautiful home and the seminary. So what happened here on day one of the battle? Carnage, bloodshed, death, destruction, horror. On the grounds of this Lutheran seminary. One of the things I think I like about Gettysburg the most is even though I'm in a fairly modern neighborhood at the moment, most of this mo modern, Modernity was not here in the 1860s. Yet, even so, the majority of what you see here in Gettysburg, out on the battlefield, in the woods where I go, in my videos, all of my videos that you have seen out here in Gettysburg, you, I am taking you through 
probably some of the best preserved and restored ground in American history. And I think personally that's what I love about it the most. As the places where I go, horticulturally and botanically, I know what I'm looking at. And what I'm seeing is horticulture and environment and ecologies that are sometime between the 1730s and 1900. So, when you're walking through Gettysburg, a lot of what you see, and that's all modern, when I'm out in my videos walking through the woods, that's what America looked like, the United States, I should say, looked like 150, 60, 200, 300 years ago here in Gettysburg. When I come around a bend on the battlefield and I see something like that, I know what I'm looking at it. It's as if you're in a state of awe. You're going back in a time machine. You're looking at the land and the landscape the way it was 200 years ago. So bravo to the Park Service for their efforts. And if you're someone who has ever donated to preserve American history or a battlefield, thank you. And that, my friends, is the cupola. And I'm going to get up around here. This walk is going to put me on my ass for a couple of days in my house. But that is the cupola up there at the top of the seminary. Again, where I mentioned earlier that you saw in the film Gettysburg and where the actual General Buford was up on that cupola spotting Confederate troops coming into Gettysburg. Original rebel, Martin Luther himself. Truth is mightier than eloquence, the spirit stronger than genius, faith greater than learning, Luther. Man, I'll tell you what, that was something else. When Martin Luther kicked the Pope all the way back to Rome at the Battle of Waterloo in 1758, that's some American history right there. So in the basement here, the basement was a morgue. Across those fields, the Confederates came. July 1st, 1863, this building was full of bodies and wounded, full, piles, mounds, heaps. Across those fields, so imagine standing out here, seminary, July 1st, 1863, and you see 50,000, 50,000 troops coming over McPherson Ridge. There's McPherson's barn, General Reynolds Monument where we were earlier and the Emanuel Harmon farm. This is day one. This is where Reynolds had his troops trying to fend off the, in the invading Confederates. And so imagine hundreds of thousands of men crossing this field, trying to kill each other, and those basements filled up pretty quickly. But we're gonna cross the field, we're gonna head through Herbst Woods and then back to my place and our walk will be done. Beautiful day. We're almost home. Seminary's up yonder, so this is how far we made it. And thanks for coming along for this walk with me into town and back to my place on Willoughby Run. Double feet of the day. I think I'm at six miles. Pretty damn good for a disabled guy with multiple sclerosis. And so what kind of carnage really happened here? I'm gonna tell you what kind of carnage really happened here. I'm gonna give you a few numbers. And so, this is the monument to the 142nd Pennsylvania, and I've done living history with the 142nd Pennsylvania at Harper's Ferry National Park. And a bunch of really good guys in the 142nd. And so, the 142nd here, imagine this is the battle line, this road. And many of the roads were 
battle line or at least where soldiers had formed up. So imagine this is all Yankee troops. Over here, through those trees, that's the Harmon farm that is across the street from my house. That's where I usually hike and share my videos. And the old Harmon farm, McLean farm. My cousins burned that barn down over there back in 1863 on July 2nd. So you have all these Yankees up here holding this line. You have all the Confederates coming through those woods. Okay, this unit, when everything was said and done, and I just told you guys that that basement of that seminary over in the distance was full of bodies, most of those bodies were from this unit. And if any of my friends from the 142nd want to correct my details, please do. Um, I, I'm, I might be off, okay, on a few things. But the story that I recall as best as I can with my memory is that basement, the only guys who survived this day one battle, okay, from that unit, the 142nd PA, I believe was their commander and maybe two guys. This entire unit was wiped out here on that day, that July 1st, mid-morning, brunch time, that whole unit, everyone you knew in that unit except for the CO and maybe two more people were gone from this earth on that day. And that's what happened right here where I'm walking. So that's pretty hardcore, isn't it? That's death, that's destruction, that's carnage, that's hell and horror. So there was maybe three people that survived from that entire 142nd Pennsylvania. So let's go over and talk about General Reynolds. And if you ever come to Gettysburg, this is likely where you will find me. This is where I usually do living history whenever I feel like it. And I, that's one of the bonuses about living here is that I can leave my house and about a mile away, I can hang out over here with my friends or my daughter and our living history impressions, which are outstanding by the way. Okay, so we can come over here whenever I want and I can talk to folks and I can tell them what happened here and what the people, the citizens of this town endured and dealt with and what the soldiers, 26 North Carolina, Archer's Brigade coming through those woods and all these Yankees here and the, the hell that these men went through on that morning. And so this is where most folks find me when I did living history consistently. I've not given up on living history. I love doing it. I probably shared three dozen facts with people today on the battlefield just walking around. It's what I do. I am that guy in your town that will walk right up to strangers and I'll make them laugh, laugh their asses off. But if I can leave one kid with a good memory from Gettysburg, mission accomplished. Day one of the battle between breakfast and brunch time, Jenna Reynolds was right here. It's unfortunate that the ash borers, we had to start taking these trees out. You notice I keep saying we. 27 year habits, hard to break. So General Reynolds is up here on his horse. Imagine, imagine, imagine. You're sitting there on your horse. You're looking in those woods. And you say, drive those fellows out of those woods. And that was General Reynolds and he was talking about the Confederates coming through the woods about that's where we're going to go. That's my way home. And General Reynolds is sitting here saying that. He's looking into those woods. He gets popped in the neck by a bullet. Falls off his horse. He's dead. And that's what happened. He was offered the command of the Union forces prior to Gettysburg by President Lincoln. And General Reynolds turned it down. He turned down the command. I can't remember why he turned it down. Perhaps he didn't want the responsibility that General Meade unfortunately had to take. And so General Reynolds was right over yonder, took a bullet right in the neck. Nobody knows who shot the bullet, if it was a stray bullet or a sniper bullet. Um, and many people have asked me, lots of people have asked me from far and wide where this is. 
General Reynolds wounding spot. But this is Erbst Woods. This is where the Confederates came through on day one and engaged the Yankees here. Seminary Ridge and the seminary in the distance. We're on McPherson's Ridge right now. I'm going through Erbst Woods. A lot of folks call it Reynolds Woods, um, but I believe it was my friend April Earp's family owned this, her relatives, um, in the 1860s. I still call it Herbst Woods. Because as my dear friend pointed out to me that this is what it's really called, is Herbst Woods. And so we are a, a mile and a half, two miles from my place, we're almost home. Before I was sick, I used to take this commute every day. Even though I had a truck, I like to walk, I like to hike, it keeps you healthy. And so now is the best part of my trip home. And I didn't need anything. For the first time in two years, I've gone into town and I didn't need anything, thanks to the kind generosity of my patrons and my friends for my birthday. I have soup, bread, chicken, milk, coffee. I'm all set. I just don't have medicine. I am completely unmedicated at the moment. And so by tomorrow, not looking forward to memory issues. That's the scariest part. But man, I'll tell you what, isn't it pretty? I wish I was healthy enough to have gotten out here when this was all orange because it's a beautiful sight. But let's carry on guys. See you when we get to Willoughby Run. Almost home folks. 26 North Carolina, Bergwin, the boy general. One of my heroes, General Archer, Tennessee Brigade. All those Harmons and Tungits from Tennessee. And the infamous Iron Brigade. It's those black-headed fellows again, is what these boys were yelling when they were engaging the Iron Brigade. And you guys have seen my ghost video. I was right over here on day one. And I've told you what previously what happened here. You guys having a good day? Awesome. So 20 minutes for 20 minutes, all right? These North Carolinians and these Tennesseans under Archer were fighting the infamous Iron Brigade, all right? So these guys sat here from there to here and through those woods and through these woods shooting at each other from this range. That's what I've been told by experts. So, okay, and these guys were killing each other. So, by estimates, in 20 minutes, in 20 minutes, 8,000 men died right here, shooting at each other. So let's roll on down to my front yard and we'll be running. We are almost home. If you're ever out here at night, it's pretty spooky. It's very spooky. And again, guys, thanks for coming for a walk with me. So you all remember my earlier statement where I said I spend most of my time on the battlefield rather than in the touristy town? You all know why. Did you see that? Multiple sclerosis hero of the day. I truly am Spider-Man. Best part of the walk.
Hooey, boy, this is nice. See you in a minute. Is this cool or what? I wish you guys were here, I really do. First word that comes to mind when I cruise through here is primordial. Welcome to the Emanuel Harmon Farm. This side of the run, I call those Harmon Woods. The other side of the run are more are called Erbst Woods or Reynolds Woods. And so we're back in my neck of the woods on my ancestral cousin's farm. That's right, my ancestral cousins lived here on this farm across the street from my place. It's called the Emanuel Harmon Farm. And those are ancestors on my mother's side of the family. But boy, that was one excellent walk. And I'm gonna be on my ass for three days. Maybe a day. Bring me a bagel. Thank you. And so as you guys may have remembered, this here lovely path was a golf cart path that President Eisenhower used to come here and golf here. But imagine President Eisenhower golfing over here, riding his golf cart here. This place looked very different after World War II. This was a golf course and a country club. In 2011, this property, I believe was purchased outright, um, mostly by the foundation, by the Gettysburg Foundation. However, sorry about that. However, there were many, many reenactment groups, reenactors and living historians who donated tens of thousands of dollars to the effort to purchase this farm and preserve it for American history. And so it was purchased through volunteer donation dollars and then given, granted, gifted to the Park Service so that it could be preserved forever. And hopefully this pond will be gone. This pond was not here. This is a golf pond. Now, if you're me, if you're me, and you've been doing what I've been doing for 30 years, when you look at this, you know what is native and you know what was planted 70 years ago. And a lot of this was not here. It should not be here. It was put in as part of the golf course landscape blueprint. And so this is where I come often, guys. And we're almost home. And thanks for coming along for this walk with me again. So that battery in my GoPro is dead. So I'm switching to my other camera. We're almost home. We're back on the country club at the day spa. And boy, it's a beautiful day out. And across the street is my place and the Abraham Spangler farm. And again, we just came through the Emanuel Harmon farm. Headed home, my friends. Any of you guys came out for this treacherous hobble with me? Danke schön. Thank you very much for coming for this walk with me. If you watched the video, thanks for watching my video. If you like my videos, please click the like button. Please click subscribe. If you click that subscribe button, you are being instrumental in saving my life. That is not a joke, okay? If I had enough subscribers on YouTube, I would get a small check every month from YouTube that would help me afford the medications that I need to stop the deterioration of the myelin coating on the nerves of my brain, which means I'm losing my ability to walk I'm losing my ability to talk. I'm losing my ability to think. Could you please hit that subscribe button? My daughter would appreciate it very much. If you like the video, please share it. Share Gettysburg. Share our American history. Share this American preserved beauty that your tax dollars have been paying for for generations. Come out here and enjoy this history. Embrace it, promote it, preserve it. Thank you if you do. And thanks for coming along and watching this video with me. 
If you guys are ever in town, please look me up. If you're someone who's been in town who's reached out to me to ask me how I'm doing, thank you so much. And my friends who have been there for me, have supported me, have been there for me through this great trial that is multiple sclerosis. Words cannot tell how grateful I am. Be well, stay safe, wear your damn mask, and I hope that the week ahead grants you all that you desire. And may all of that be good things. Have a great rest of your weekend, my friends, and thanks for tuning in.